Happy Columbus Day, Juliet. Yay! Happy Columbus Day, everybody. It's going to be a good show. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Welcome to Narrative Dissonance here in Unsafe Space. Uh, the person I call Juliet is Juliet. That's uh, right. <laughs> and I'm Carter. <laughs> um, if you're watching us, please don't forget to subscribe. You can subscribe on YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble, probably Utreon. Utreon. I'm supposed to be pushing Rumble, though, because we're starting to do more on Rumble. Also, um, the ghost of Unsafe Space is back on Twitter, underscore Unsafe Space. You can follow us there. Um, and, yeah, you can go to unsafespace.com if you want to support us. Any housekeeping? Let's do some. Wait, Juliet. So our next book club, is Juliet is hosting our next book club. Yes. It's her book. She didn't write this particular book, although she has written fiction. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but she chose this book. Uh -huh. uh, and I have to say... Um, Juliet, this this book, this Slaughterhouse Five book, having started it, I'm realizing it is not about Halloween. It's it not. Is not a, it's not a Halloween book. It's like so clickbait. I'm partly disappointed. <laughs> Tricked you into reading it. <laughs> Remind everyone when that is, and that uh, is uh, Sunday, October thirtieth, and the time tentatively at noon Eastern time, but. We're figuring that out. Oh, okay. I'll know for sure next week. It's a short book, so if you haven't started, you got plenty of time. And it's okay. a fast, it's, like, it's an easy read, unlike the books that Alex throws at us where you need a thesaurus in your left hand and you can't ever have any distractions or else you lose the one sentence that was a page long. Uh, <laughs> this is nice and like, you can zip through this book uh, very easily, I think. Yeah. All right, let's let's jump in. Uh, let's jump in. So, as you who, as everyone who watches this show regularly knows, narrative dissonance is about questioning the mainstream narrative, and typically we have a show in which we bring on journalists and talk about the recent news, and we ask them, uh, you know, how the mainstream media has been misleading us, what stories we should be paying attention to. But today is Columbus Day, and we wanted to do something a little bit different, but still in that uh, theme on Columbus Day, and which is we wanted to talk about Christopher Columbus and Columbus Day because it's been uh, the target of a lot of attacks lately, Columbus Day and, and Christopher Columbus uh, in particular. Statues coming down, um, you know, a usurpation of Columbus Day for Indigenous Peoples Day, lots of outrageous claims about how uniquely horrible Christopher Columbus was. And uh, so we decided to bring an expert on to talk about Christopher Columbus. And that's what the show is going to be about today. So please welcome Raphael Oritz. Raphael is the author of several books on Christopher Columbus, including Christopher Columbus, the hero. That's right. That's what that title says. Christopher Columbus, the hero. Christopher sorry, Columbus Day versus Indigenous Peoples Day and Christopher Columbus and the Christian Church. He also has an upcoming children's book about Columbus for ages six to nine. Mr. Oritz is of Taino. Taino. I'm not, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, Taino descent, and is on a mission to disprove modern-day revisionism based on objective truth rooted in primary historical source material. He appeared in the documentary Courage and Conviction, the true story of Christopher Columbus, as well as on several radio shows, blogs, magazines, including the Joe Piscopo radio show, ABC7 News, Breitbart, and many others. His work has been featured in newspapers, blogs, and news sites around the U.S., including his native Puerto Rico. You can follow him at the official Christopher Columbus website, which is www.officialchristophercolumbus.com and on his YouTube channel, Official Christopher Columbus. We will put links to all that stuff in the show notes. Rafael, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me today. Thank you for thank you for joining us. Um, yeah. I maybe Okay, I'm going to start with an inspiration, actually, from my daughter, which I told you a little bit about uh, yesterday, <laughs> uh, Raphael. But my my daughter, like most kids, uh, goes to a school in which we're not always confident that what they're teaching her is not indoctrination. So we kind of pay attention to it a little bit carefully. And But she's also semi-inoculated to it. So she knows she knows what's going on. She knows what's what. And she came home the other day and she said, you know, my teachers keep telling me that, that I need to hear the other side of the Christopher Columbus story. And then they proceed to tell her all about he's a genocidal maniac and blah, 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 blah. And he shouldn't, you know. And she said, you know what? I realized 
I don't know the other side of what. I never learned the right the other side. Like I never learned the original side of the story. No one's ever talked to me about Christopher Columbus. We never actually learned about Christopher Columbus. We've only learned the counter narrative to Christopher Columbus. So uh, assuming that a lot of people um, either are like me and forgot most of what they learned in eighth grade or are maybe younger and just were never even told the basic mm -hmm. facts about Christopher Columbus. Maybe we can start, Raphael, with just an overview. You can tell us, like, who actually was this dude <laughs> um, and why, like, what would, what's an overview of what one should learn about Christopher Columbus in eighth grade history class? Well, Christopher Columbus, he was what we learned in school. He was a good man, and he was uh, from Italy, Genoa, Italy, and he discovered America. So all those things that we learned, they are true when you read the primary sources. The other stuff that you mentioned about him being the genocidal maniac and the rapist and a pedophile and a racist, all that stuff is not true. Uh, that information comes from modern day revisionists uh, like Howard Zinn and other people, but he's the one that is the most famous of them. And uh, and he's been, and, and many people who follow him, they've been pushing against Columbus Day. And after so, after many decades, they're, they're being, they start to become successful in doing that. Yeah. Let's, so let's, let's back up and just talk about like some really general stuff. So he, we all know in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, although I'm not even sure everyone knows that anymore, but okay. So he, he, he came from, he was sponsored by the King and Queen of Spain. Mm -hmm. um, although he was Italian, uh, he, he came to America, but he landed, was it Haiti or Dominican Republic somewhere down there in the Caribbeans, right? He settled in Hispaniola, which is modern day Haiti and, mm -hmm. and, uh, the Dominican Republic. Haiti is actually the indigenous name. Uh, mm -hmm. but he discovered okay. some people say that they say, no, he never reached North America, which is not, I mean, that that's true, but he reached Central America, South America and the Caribbean. Right. Okay. And, and also, North America was reached because of him too. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So he gets there, and um, from what we, from what one might surmise from the mainstream media, uh, I would think that it sounds like he gets there and immediately comes off the ship with an axe and starts slaughtering yes. people and uh, putting them in chains and enslaving them. Uh, that's what he did, right? <laughs> no. Uh, if you go to YouTube, there are some videos that he, people have made of cartoons uh, mm -hmm. doing that. You know, they have this cartoon of Christopher Columbus going island to island, uh, killing indigenous people. But that's not true. Yeah. So uh, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. I think I think so. He he actually makes friends with one of the chiefs there. And and I mentioned earlier that you were of Taino descent. Is that how I pronounce? Did I pronounce it wrong or? Yes, that's that's right. Taino. Okay. Taino, uh, that is the it was that the general the tribes that were there at the time, were they the Taino? Is that who that yeah, was? Yeah, those those are the natives who were living in the Caribbean, including Puerto Rico, where I was okay. born. Okay. And that's what that's what also makes me uh, to dig into Christopher Columbus because I never heard such of you know, such things. My understanding was that he was good toward the natives, so I started to, uh, you know, to research to see what was the truth because uh, I never heard about that. And also, if, if those claims were true, I would not be here. I would be, or maybe I would be here, but saying don't don't celebrate Columbus. Right. I'm sure that the anti-Columbus Day people don't appreciate your heritage very much, uh, combined with your stance. Uh, that's that's not their favorite combination. Um, so, so he comes in and he, he actually, correct me where I'm wrong here, but he befriends one of the chiefs. There's a few tribes there and he befriends one of the chiefs, uh, Guacanagari. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Is that, yeah. is that well, correct? Yeah. You can say it like that or you can say Guacanagari. Guacanagari. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he makes friends with him. Uh, he's one of the chiefs in Hispaniola. And uh, he he make a peace, uh, a peace treaty with him to protect him from his enemies. That's what people used to do back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
because everywhere that Columbus uh, went during the first voyage, the the natives would run away, and they they did not know why. <clears throat> Later, they they learned about the Caribs, who were uh, that's where the word Caribe comes from or Caribbean, but also that's where the word can cannibal comes from too. So yeah. when they saw the, the 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 boats and the ships, they thought that that was the Caribs coming to because they they used to go and and. Uh, raid the Caribbean islands, uh, killing people and enslaving them, and raping the women and castrating uh, the, the 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 men and and so on. So, uh, so Columbus became friends because he would not even let his men touch anything, and he would give him uh, gifts to them just to. And he said that in the in the very first the very first day that he came to to San Salvador, which was the first island. That he wanted to give them gifts, as, as so they could see that they they were good people, and also because one of his missions was to bring Christianity to the new world, mm -hmm. and uh, so he goes to Hispaniola. He makes friends with him, and and everywhere that he went, people were complaining about the Caribs. So that that's why he made a peace treaty with him to protect them. Okay, so that by the way, that was one of the things that uh, I I can't believe I didn't hadn't heard of before, but. If you, you can go right to the Oxford English Dictionary, that's where the word cannibal comes from. It comes from the the Kanibs and Carib tribes there that were, you know, wreaking havoc and doing like what you said. They're just, you know, uh, being cannibals. So so he he befriends this guy. He leaves people at a little I, place that I guess he calls Navidad. Uh, I think he founded it around Christmas or something. I don't know why he called it Navidad, but he leaves this guy. He he leaves his like forty men, goes back to Spain, and he comes back, and the other tribes had slaughtered his men, and he had people on his side. He, there were there were people under his charge who wanted to just go attack all the natives, but he said, no, no, we have to go talk to my buddy and see what happened, basically. Is that is that correct? Okay, so what happened was that uh, he came with three ships, La Nina, La Pinta, and the Santa Maria, but the Santa Maria shipwreck on the uh, 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 Christmas Eve. So what they did, they took the wood from the ship and they built this fort and they left with two ships back, and he left 39 men over there. And uh, he called it La Navidad, which means Christmas, because that happened Christmas Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. Yeah. So he become back, he's received as a hero, and this is like the short version, because there is a lot of details. Then he comes back to the Caribbean, but this time he came with 17 ships and 1,200 people, settlers. Uh, they have everything from priests, carpenters, uh, people who was going to work the gold mines. They have a few women too, and um, <clears throat> and, and a doctor. So when they they return back to Hispaniola, they see that all 39 men were murdered by a rival chief uh, named Caonabo. So in the beginning, people suspect that it was Wakanagari who did it, but Columbus say, "Now let's wait," and. Uh, Eventually, it was proven that it was Caonabo. Caonabo, even though he was one of the chiefs of Hispaniola, Hispaniola has six ships, uh, six chiefs back then. <clears throat> and, uh, and as I say, they were called Tainos, but, but uh, Caonabo was uh, Carib born. He was born from the, from the Caribs. So he, mm -hmm. ha he had a very bad temper. But also, the man of Colombo said he disobeyed his orders. He left them there, he told them, stay here. Respect the people, respect the chief, do not go to other territories, but they did the opposite. And that's okay. why they got killed. So Caonabo came and he burned the, every, everything. And even though Wakanagari tried to fight, they were not successful. So uh, they Columbus did everything he could to, to keep the peace. He moved to another part of the island and he uh, made another uh, settlement called uh, Ela Isabella. In, on honor of Queen Isabel, and they worked there. Uh, he left to explore the Cari you know, the Caribbean. He was trying to reach the continent, and uh, but again, the man took the advantage, you know, that he was not there to go and do things that they should not. It was mostly because of the woman. They liked the woman, 
And back then also they would give you the woman too, you know, they, uh, that's, that's what they, they used to do. They liked them a lot, but they, they, they were not, you know. Anyway, they got in trouble when Columbus came back. Uh, he punished those men who misbehaved. And Wakanagari came to Columbus and he asked, he asked him, would you help me to fight Kaonabo? Because he also killed one of my wife. Uh, the, the chief were polygamous. They have many wives. And he said that Kaonabo killed one of his wife and kidnapped another one. So Columbus said that, yeah, that's fine. So he fought him because he was the guy who killed his man. And also not, not, not only because of that, because Columbus tried to do everything to keep the peace, but he kept killing men. Yeah. And he he, uh, he decapitated like 20 more. He tried to burn a hospital with 40 men in it. So that's why Columbus fought them and he defeated them. And he sent some of them as prisoners of war or slaves to Spain. And, uh, and he made everybody else to pay uh, a tribute. So you read the revisionist version you will see some things here and there of the story that I told you just now, but all distorted. Oh, like right. They say, for example, that he, the tribute was that if you don't pay, they would say, they, they say, if, if you don't pay the tribute, they would cut you the hand off, but that's not true. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they, they, they were, they would say that he was, he went in a, Columbus went to the island in a slave raiding, you know, looking for a slave. That's not true. So, that's what happened. Uh, he had that battle and he sent those people back to Spain because of that reason. But he said that that would be uh, for for a time. He was not looking to, to do something permanent. And he even talked to Kaonabo and he talked to the other chief who were enemies to of Wakanagari because he wants them to, to, to earn them as friends, as allies. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can keep going on if you want to. I don't know. Sure. That's, no, that, I, that was the second voyage. Yeah, this is this is helpful because I think may, maybe I, I guess context is good here, but we should also we should also be just articulate what some of the accusations uh, against him were, right? And one of them you touched on was he was a slave trader. That's one of the things that they they say he was a slave trader. Um, and, you know, as you mentioned, he didn't bring any slaves. He, like, didn't go to Africa and bring slaves or anything. That wasn't his thing. But he did have uh, POWs that he caught in war. He did send back to Spain, as was the custom, um, to be sold into slavery. But I think we should talk about context. Was slavery something that the, the tribes had never heard of before? Or was this something that was normal when you defeat your enemy in war, you enslave the men uh, that was normal and also there are different kinds of slavery and different kinds of conquest it's not the same mm -hmm. when people hear the word conquest they think about uh, you know people killing for no reason burning things you know uh that would be i mean that's a form of conquest like the vikings they used to raid they would go and pillage and rape people that's also what the caribs used to do too uh the, the cannibals that i told you about Colombo's uh, way of conquest was to make friends with uh, the indigenous people and ally with them to fight a common enemy. And right. but but again, I, he would go to places and he would not let anybody do anything wrong, and he would punish those who who would do. It. And that was also by the orders of the queen, because the queen considered them uh, citizens, and if you are a citizen, uh, you are protected. And and. And also he was looking to to bring them to Christianity. If you were a Christian or a candidate for Christianity, you could not be enslaved. Right. And as I said, the slavery, uh, when people think about the word slavery, uh, and I used to wonder why people are so, you know, in this, you know, why, what's the big deal? I mean, that's part of the history of, of all the world. It's not just United States. And then I remember, okay, United States, you know, Blacks and the racism that happened uh, uh, later, but most conquests, historically speaking, was due to to either conquest or war or death. And be and depending where you were, uh, the kidnappings, which that's what people usually think when they hear the the word slavery, that innocent people being kidnapped. 
depending where you were, that could be uh, illegal and punished with death. Yeah. And one example would be the Old Testament and also the Amurabi Code. You mm -hmm. cannot do that. So uh, in, it, Columbus was only allowed to quote unquote enslave uh, prisoners of war and that's it, done. And then he was suspended too. When he finished his third voyage as governor, uh, he was suspended. You hear this, uh, another thing that struck me once I learned the truth about this is you hear this claim that, oh, he was so bad that he was arrested and sent back to Spain in shackles. Uh, but then when you hear what the story was and why he was arrested, it was not for crimes against indigenous people. Do you want to tell yeah. that story? Yes, and that's the third voyage. So that's good that you're going... Uh, you know, like uh, in order, timeline wise. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's the way that I wrote my book too, the uh, Christopher Columbus, the hero, and debunking the claims, but I'm using the, the timeline so people uh, have, uh, you know, so they don't get lost. And uh, so Christopher Columbus goes back to Spain to report himself after he finished his second voyage. And uh, everything went bad on the second, you know, like they, uh, you know, everybody was expecting to, as soon as they, as, as they get to the new world, they would become rich, and that was not like that. You know, many people got sick, it was too hot, there was no air conditioning back then, uh, food got spoiled. Then Kaonabo also had the audacity to burn an, an all the uh, crops from the island with the purpose of killing the Spaniards, but that... Uh, that that's what that have an effect really on the most most I mean everybody but especially indigenous people because of the of the island because the Spaniards were not used to the indigenous uh, food at the time but they many of them died of too you know the famine and, and and sickness and diseases and and many of them the, those who survived returned back and they were complaining about Columbus and then the, 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 there was also hurricanes coming and destroying everything. So it was very bad. Columbus went back because he still believed in his projects. And he, he brought evidence that, you know, that yes, there is gold and yes, we can make it. Just, just you know, let, 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 let us give us a, uh, one more try. So he goes back to the third voyage. He left his brothers in charge. He had two brothers. But then there was a mutiny, which was kind of normal back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy, his name was Roldan. He the, he's the one who led this insurrection, and he uh, took over. And uh, when Columbus arrived, he had no choice but to submit to the guy. Uh, one of the demands that they want, they wanted, hold on, give me a minute. Mm. They wanted the the people, the Taínos, who were their allies, to work for them in the mines, and Columbus didn't want that. That, that would be a foreign slavery, and Columbus didn't yep. want it. But he had no choice. He could not fight the guy. He was outnumbered. Uh, so he did whatever he wanted to, but he would send letters, secret letters to the queen saying, you know, I'm doing this, but I'm not in favor of this. Please send somebody, send soldiers to contain the situation. And also he wanted uh, that they send judge, a judge to investigate all these people because mm -hmm. they were very bad too, you know, with the mutiny. And the queen did not know any better when, uh, because the, these people, they wanted a uh, slave to, and, and they sent some of them to Spain, uh, which Colombo was fine with. Okay, let's send them so the queen see what's going on, because some of the women were pregnant. And when, and when, when the queen saw that, she was so mad. And she said, uh, who is Columbus, you know, to, to enslave my people? But she did not know any better. So what she did, she sent this guy named Bobadilla, Francisco de Bobadilla, to investigate. But Bobadilla, what he did was to arrest Columbus first and then ask questions later. And he made this dossier uh, of what the mutineers claim against Columbus. And he sent Columbus and his brothers in chain to, to, to Spain. And that's, uh, and that's the part that people won't tell you that, it, yes, that happened. He was sent in chains, but the claims were not true. And as soon as he uh, arrived in Spain, uh, the, the queen and the, you know, they were kind of embarrassed what happened. 
and in their own way, they apologized the king and the queen to him. And they restored everything that, that they, they did wrong uh, against Columbus. And they arrest all those people and they charge it with mutiny. So that's the way that the story, you see people are very partial and very selective what part of the story they're telling you. Right, right. They only tell you about the chains and, it, and if you leave everything else out, then you assume he's guilty. And the claims were that he was mistreating the colonists. That was the claim, that he was very hard for them. And uh, Columbus, all that he was doing was doing what the queen told her to do. You know, to, to, if they misbehave, he would uh, punish them. He was yeah. not mistreating them. Right. Right. Okay, so um, I guess the only one of the other major things that we hear with respect to, uh, I, we've already touched on on genocide, which is kind of a ridiculous claim to make about Columbus because he never. I mean, he was he did four voyages in ten years. Like he couldn't possibly, even if he wanted to commit genocide, uh, he, like he he couldn't have. Uh, but what did happen was disease hit uh the indigenous population that they weren't prepared for um and i think smallpox typhoid and diphtheria were the th were the three main ones i don't know if there's other ones um, and, and the indigenous population their immune systems were not used to those diseases and so a large number of them died and um according to a source that i looked at roughly 80 percent died without ever having contact with any of uh and when we're talking Columbus and the people after Columbus at this point, um, now this is this this is thrown around as if it was an intentional thing, like Columbus, you know, as if that there was a germ theory and they knew about the germs and they had some bottled smallpox and they brought it there and they said, "Aha! I will unleash my bottled smallpox on the population." Um, can you talk a little bit about the the dynamics of the health consequences for both sides? Yeah. So what they claim uh, when they say genocide, that's what they mean. It's really diseases and plagues. But you see, we have this COVID nineteen, and nobody's saying that that's. I mean, I know I heard I've, I've actually heard some people saying that it's genocide now, but never <laughs> nobody was using that term before. Because it's right. normal, you know, this thing is not new, you know, before Columbus, there were diseases in mm -hmm. the new world and the old world. And also uh, the way that they try to present all these claims against Columbus, they are trying to use this perspective, like there was no conquest, war, slavery before 1492 in the Americas. And then as soon as Columbus came, then uh, 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 we have uh, conquest and slavery and, and death and so on. But all those things were happening before, you know, and also imperialism, which is one of the claims that they say about Columbus and colonialism. But the indigenous people, they have the Aztec Empire and they have the Inca Empire and they have the Maya Empire. And and they also practice human sacrifices and, and cannibalism. That's genocide, actually. I mean, they, they sacrifice thousands of people every year just as part of their holidays. It was not just yeah. war, I mean, it just as part of their whole, uh, you know, and the uh, religious ceremonies, but you don't hear that part of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, genocide is that 39, 39 men were in Hispaniola and all of them were murdered by Caonabo. That's genocide. Also, the first people who died in the New World were, was not the, the indigenous people, but the Spaniards. They died first of, as I say, you know, because of the sun, famine, but also they got sick with fevers, malaria. Then later they got sick during the third voyage, the one that we were talking just now. Uh, and because Columbus was not around, they took advantage you know, of the woman again, and, but they got sick too with syphilis. And they spread, and then when they come back to the old world, they spread it up around, you know, in Europe and, and millions of people died. But, Nobody mentions that part of the story. The, uh, the smallpox part happened many uh, years later and mm. happened after Columbus was, was dead. <laughs> and it happened in several times in several places. Doesn't mean that it spread everywhere in, the, in North America, South America, Central America. Uh, yes, it happened in one island and maybe happened in North America, but later in some place. But it wasn't something that happened simultaneously everywhere. 
And uh, so that those are the details that they will mention you. Uh, also, uh, something that we say about that argument is that if sickness and diseases are genocide, then uh, the when you when people die of of using you know uh, because the the tobacco was introduced by the indigenous people and millions of people die every day because uh, smoking cigarettes and so on. So that would be genocide, but nobody's saying that that's indigenous genocide. Right. So no they're blaming, very connected. Yeah, no one's blaming indigenous people for uh, tobacco deaths every year. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and, and as I say, many of those, uh, you know, smallpox happened much later after Columbus was dead. And many even, the, and, and you know, we were talking, yes, there were some atrocities that happened much later, but that's the, that's the point, much later. Mm -hmm. And they are blaming Columbus, uh, the different timeline uh, when he was dead. There is a book called a, Ch a Short Account of the Destruction of the Indies by Bartolomé de las Casas. And he was one of the primary sources of, of Christopher Columbus. People use it and they read some selections over there. Uh, that's where you hear about uh, babies being murdered and, and uh, uh, thousands of people dying. But if you read uh, very closely, the book is not about Christopher Columbus. Columbus was dead. Mm -hmm. And many of those atrocities happen in places that he never visited or places that he never settled. Right. I was able to find it by, because, you know, you read all these claims, but they don't tell you where, you know, they don't tell you what book, what chapter, what page. So I had to go to the primary sources. They make me work very hard, but I was able <laughs> to find it. I was able to find the chapter and verse, and that's when I noticed, okay, wait, this is, that's not the right timeline. They're using some other timeline of history. They're talking right. about decades, or they're talking about the people, and they blame it on Columbus. So let's let's just before we kind of I, I do want to move into um, I do want to move into maybe why. Uh, oh, actually, wait, one more thing that he's also accused of being racist. Um, yeah. And I, maybe we should talk about that, because I know you've looked at passages that he wrote in his own journal and you <coughs> looked at his motivation for bringing Christianity uh, to the natives, can you talk about his alleged racism? Uh, when they say racist, what they mean is slavery. But but that you know, I, I, like I say on my second book, slavery and racism are two different things. They are not one and the same. I know that in America, it's kind of hard to separate both because of what happened with black, uh, you know, the African Americans. But historically speaking, they are not one and the same. Otherwise. Indigenous people were racist when they enslaved other indigenous people. Blacks would be racist uh, when they enslaved other black people in Africa. Uh, and the same with uh, white Europeans. Mm -hmm. So that has nothing to do with racism. And also, <clears throat> so that's where they, they, they got that claim. But then, you know, as I say, Christopher Columbus came here and one of the purposes was to bring the gospel to people of another race. So how can be how can he be a racist? And uh, also the KKK, uh, they hated Columbus because of that. Yep. Because in the 1920s, they want to remove some of his statues because he was not a racist. But now he's a racist. <laughs> he, he wasn't so, in 1920. He's busy when he, for a dead guy. He a lot of <laughs> and also he's the one who brought the union between uh, white Europeans and indigenous people, and that's where we came from, the, the Hispanic people, and yeah. also black Africans, especially in Puerto Rico, we are a, a mix of white Europeans with uh, indigenous and black Africans. So he was a racist, he was very bad at it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point, yeah. I think, uh, I don't remember if it's you, because I read some of your book, uh, your, your Christopher Columbus, the hero, and I don't remember where I read this, but, um, there's a point where he's talking about the people and he's praising their <clears throat> generosity and their intelligence. And he says they could readily become Christians as they have a good understanding. He has a lot of nice things to say about the people that he encounters. He seems to have very high hopes for them. It doesn't read at all like you would imagine a racist would write 
if he landed in a place with people that looked different. Yeah, people were not thinking about that stuff. Uh, that that uh, thing about, uh, I don't know, that, that came much later. This racism about white people right. and, and, you know, thinking that you are superior by genetics or whatever, that came much later. Mm -hmm. They were not thinking about that at all. Now, I... I guess one last thing before we move on. So I keep saying one last thing, but there's another one that I'm thinking of. We, we have this, uh, especially in the U.S. I don't know if this exists elsewhere, but we have this idea of native populations prior to uh, Europe's arrival as these pre-existing Disney-like harmonies with nature where um, everything is great, and um, they're sophisticated and they've got this, this, you know, beautiful, you know, relationship with nature. How sophisticated were the people when Columbus arrived? What did, like, what did he find? Well, in, in uh, on the case, you know, every indigenous people was different. You, mm -hmm. you know, like the Tainos from the Caribbean, they were peaceful, but in the sense that when, when Columbus said that they were good people and they were peaceful, what he meant is that he was received peacefully. He was not attacked. Mm -hmm. But the Caribs, they, they were warlike and they were right. evil. They, they would do all the things that I mentioned earlier. Uh, then you go to the Aztecs and they were doing whatever they were doing, you know, with the sacrifices and stuff. Uh, that was because of Montezuma and mm -hmm. everybody hated food. Uh, that's why, uh, uh, Hernan Cortes, he won the war against him because uh, the indigenous people uh, unite with the Spaniards to defeat his, their own emperor. So, uh, and the same with the Incas. So it doesn't mean that everybody was bad. Uh, it, it's like anything, there are good people everywhere. There were good Spaniards and bad Spaniards. There were good indigenous people. There were bad indigenous people. There were people who were okay too. Uh, all the good things, they were always praised by the Spaniards, not only by Columbus, but everybody loved it. And, but also the, the mm -hmm. things that were bad, they would mention. Uh, the, the people who were writing back then, they were very honest. They will tell you the truth about it. They were not hiding anything. Everything yeah. that was good, that was mentioned, everything that was wrong, that was mentioned too. Mm -hmm. Now, the people... About the Spaniards too. Mm -hmm. my, under my understanding, and I, I guess I, I could be wrong, but my understanding is that uh, either Columbus or those immediately after him, they brought concepts like crop rotation and animal breeding and that kind of stuff to the new world, which actually did help uh, indigenous people be more productive agriculturally and not do slash and burn crop uh, raising anymore and, you know, have, uh, you know, domesticated animals. Is that accurate? I think so. Yeah, there was. Uh, that's what they call uh, the Columbus Exchange. Columbus, he took some plants from here and brought them back to the old world, and some stuff from the old world and brought it back here. And the same with animals. He's the one who brought horses to to the new world. There were there were no horses during that uh, time of, of history. Yeah, yeah. But then they use okay. the same term. They use the same term about uh, Columbus Exchange, like exchanging diseases too. Like he brought uh, smallpox. Uh, but and the indigenous people brought uh, the syphilis. Syphilis, which right? It's kind of ridiculous to me, in my in my in my opinion, because yeah. the deal is if you look at the you know the you know if you look, they say that syphilis uh, or smallpox. I mean, it's a it's an European disease. But if you look uh, into the history of smallpox, which I also mentioned in my second book, uh, <clears throat> it, it, it it's been for thousands of years every, everywhere. The, the all this person that they found was a mummy in Egypt and you know they're not from Europe and that spread everywhere and the people who were living here I mean sorry in the old world they came from the Indies which is Asia so uh, somehow they came here to the new world and uh, um, we don't know what diseases they had because they didn't have a written language and those right. who had uh, something similar to a language, a uh, written language like the Aztecs, what they wrote more, they wrote more about their conquests and their wars than diseases and stuff. But we know about some of the diseases because the ones that were happening 
at that moment because some of the historians, Spaniards who were there, they were writing about it. Mm. And I wrote a long list to prove that diseases did exist before before that. So when got when they got there, yes, they were, you know, leprosy, they had uh, uh, the syphilis, they have uh, oh, 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 other diseases that I don't remember right now because I don't have it right now in front of me. <clears throat> But there is a long list. So th that thing about smallpox being introduced by Columbus is assumption, in my opinion. Right. Right. Okay. Well, and, and, maybe, and it, uh, maybe it was the first time that they saw it because that's why they said we had never seen that, but that's the people that they met at the time. Right. But we don't know about the past because they didn't record the past in, in, in written language. Right. There's no rec there was no records, right? And, you know, it also, you know, when people, impl when they say that and they put it in the same uh, sentence as genocide, it implies that there was some kind of intention behind it. And, of course, we have to remember that in 1492, there was no germ theory of disease. No one knew what was going on. They didn't, there was no intentional bringing of either smallpox nor syphilis. That No one was trying to use you know, biological warfare against each other. That wasn't a thing. And also the, the Europeans, they were not as uh, immune to smallpox in the beginning because uh, there is a book by Carol, Carol Delaney. And she wrote this book about Christopher Columbus and the, and the quest for Jerusalem. And she talks that when Columbus arrived in Spain, a few months before he arrived, there was a, 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 a smallpox uh, spread out and killed uh, a lot of people. So they were not immune. What happened is when they came, you know, at some point when they, they came here to the new world, at some point they became immune and nobody knows that. And that's always been the mystery. And people have these different theories how that happened. But the first person who uh, introduced, at least in Mexico, the smallpox was not a white European. It was a black person who was working for Hernan Cortes. Yeah. Mm. It's the one who spread it out. So I say, okay, so how that can be an European disease? Right. I mean, right. the, the, the disease they don't they won't discriminate on the race. If it's something is contagious, it will take you know. At some point, right. people will de uh, develop uh, I I I immunity, and we don't know how that happened with the Europeans at that time. But they were also afraid too. Even the pilgrims I read much later that they were afraid when they saw the, the first spread of mo smallpox because they were not immune, but then somehow they, they became immune and the other yeah. people were not. Yep. So let's talk about indigenous people's day. Let's talk about, actually, you mentioned, you mentioned Howard Zinn. So is he the, is he patient zero for the attack on Columbus? I don't know. Maybe in the modern time, in modern times, maybe, but because Columbus, you know, he uh, there there have been there was, there have been always people who have attacked him, even though he was always uh, considered a hero for five hundred years. Uh, uh, the attack was mostly on the Spaniards in the beginning because they took some of the books that uh, the person that I mentioned, Bartolomé de las Casas, wrote. And he was also, he's also one of the primary sources for Christopher Columbus too. And as I say, he was talking about the things that happened, some of the mistreatment that happened by Spaniards. So they took some of his books and they used it as propaganda. Other, I'm talking about other European uh, countries. They use it against the Spaniards to promote them as evil people. That's what, that's, it's called the Spanish black legend. So they I were see, using that. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, they were using it as, as, and that, that would be the excuse for other Europeans to go then to the Caribbean and invade and send their pirates and corsairs to invade the islands uh, because they were saying, it's like today, like people say Colombo was bad, so they send the, their pirates to our city to destroy the statues of Columbus and mm -hmm. use graffiti. It's the same right. thing, just a different style, way, but, but it's the same, it's, it's, you know, history repeats. Mm -hmm. So this was used, so other nations wanted an excuse to go to the New World, and this was kind of an excuse that was manufactured, which is, oh, the Spanish are way worse than us French or British, so we yes. have to go 
fix it. So, and then what happened was, you know, his books were censored by Spain too, and the Catholic mm -hmm. Church. So uh, that's why it's kind of hard to find them. You can find that one, the one that I told you, because it's very short, it's in English. History of the Indies, uh, you only have like a 232 pages long out of the four or five volumes of hundreds of pages, sometimes like 900 pages long. That's the only thing that you're gonna find in English. And also it's in Spanish and it's all Spanish, but I was forced to read it because I wanted to see about Columbus, that was true or not. And uh, so, it was called the Spanish black, black legend, but it was against Spaniards, not really a, against Columbus. But now they're using that and they, they, are, they, they are blaming it on Columbus. But also they use it in, in South America, the communist people, the Marxists, and, uh, and, and they had to censor again his books. And uh, it, it's being used by Marxists. And that's right. why they, I, think, I think that's why they changed the name Columbus Day in South America as uh, Dia de la Raza, which is the day of the race. They've been very successful and now they're trying to do the same thing. And it's the same people. It's always anarchists, Marxist people, communists, so on. Yeah. Maybe we should really quickly just explain when, why Columbus Day became a thing in America in the first place. Um, do you want to talk about the? I, I know we actually maybe now's a good time to put. We had a super chat that came up earlier. Maybe we should put it back on the screen if I can find it. Um, there it is. This is from AD. Thank you, AD. AD says this day is important to my dad. My sorry to my day friend Jack Bosworth, whose great great grand uncle was a victim of the March 1891 lynching of Italians that gave us Columbus Day. Do you want to tell that story a little bit or, or, or yeah. no about, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So we go, if we go, you know, the, the modern day version about Columbus is that supposedly Washington Irving is the one who made Columbus a hero in, in United States, but that's not true. Uh, Columbus was the hero long before uh, Washington Irving uh, in the 1800s or our, uh, yeah, I think that he was in the 1800s, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, before Washington Irving, we already have Washington DC, which stands for District of Columbia. And many places were named as, after Christopher Columbus. I live in South Carolina and Columbia is our uh, uh, state capital. Many places in the United States are named after Columbus, either as Columbia or Columbus, Ohio, or many other places like that. It, not only here, <clears throat> but also in Canada, we have British Columbia, we have even a country named as after Columbus called Colombia in South America. Right. Uh, in the 1800s also, they were inspired, the South America, after the revolution that happened in the, in the 1700s in the United States. They, uh, they wanted, you know, we have here the United States of, of America. So they, want to, they wanted to become independent from Spain and they want to name it South America as the United States of Colombia. But then it ended up being just Colombia. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so, and um, my in Puerto Rico, uh, he's mentioned my name. Christopher Columbus is mentioned in the in our anthem. Uh -huh. So he's always been a hero for you know. So that thing that he became famous because of Irving, that's not true. So then uh, I know that uh, in the eighteen ninety one, I think it was that there was a mass lynching of Italian Italian Americans or Italian immigrants. And uh, that caused tensions between Italy and, and the United States. Uh, these people were accused, but they were, uh, I guess, proof that they were innocent, so they let them go. But then uh, a mass uh, uh, group of people, they, they lynched them. And that's what caused that. Uh, there is a movie about it too. It was free, they, I saw it like a few months ago on, on YouTube. I don't remember the name, but it's based on a book too, and Christopher, Christopher Walken is in the movie too. It's a good movie. It's kind of, you know, hard to watch sometimes. It was very unfair what they did to them. So what they did, the, the president at the time, he made uh, a Columbus Day, like a national holiday to amend for what happened. Hmm. Even Try though- to the Italian yeah. community with the rest of America in yes, some way. Because he was, I mean, he was a hero to everybody, but especially to the Italian, you know, because he was Italian. Right, right. 
I think I'll, I I didn't realize what the impetus behind Columbus Day was. So, um, it makes sense. Um, it makes sense that that's. I think it wasn't until much later that it became a federal holiday. But it it yeah. You know, president President declared it back in 1892 is what I've got here, mm -hmm. President Harrison. Okay. But even before that, he was already a hero before that. Right. 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 Of course, as you mentioned, there's statues, things named after him. It's very clear that we all recognized. Uh, even America, according to Bartolome de las Casas, America should have been named after him. Yeah. It should have been named Columbus or Colombia, not America. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Américo was pushy, he uh, he reached uh, South America, Central America, but he was using a map by Columbus, and he claimed that he reached the continent before Columbus, and that's not true. So Las Casas, uh, he was thinking that maybe he was lying, and his uh, when he published his uh, account with pushy, it happened at a time that Columbus fame was you know was not that much anymore. So he became very famous, and this uh, German cartographer, he put the name America on, on the map of that they were doing at, at a time about the discoveries of the Indies, because, uh, you know, they, they were always calling America the Indies. Right. But when America was pushed, it became famous, then uh, this cartographer put down the name America, and that's stock, and that's the way that it's been called until now. Oh, wow. It was an act like a... A cartographer's whim is why it's called America. Yeah. It's also it, that's the problem when people don't know history too. Uh -huh. So you know, he, he um, was. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know he's always been like that. I mean, it's like uh, I, I say that on the last part of the of, of my <laughs> the book, the hero. You know that he, they even stole that from him, the name of the of the yes. continent. <laughs> so right. why he cannot have at least one day a year, you know, one day at least once a year, because they even that they stole it, you know, the name of, of the company. Yeah, you know, you're reminding me of one other thing that I I hear, which is, uh, I didn't really, I didn't know that it was not true. I just assumed that it was true, but I didn't care. Uh, there are people saying, well, he didn't discover America. The Vikings did. They were here <laughs> beforehand. Um, but this is based on the the Vinland map which actually has been proven to be a forgery or I'm proven I'm using in, in quotes. Cause I don't know if you can prove stuff like that, but I mean, teams at Yale, like mainstream teams have said, actually, no, the ink in this map uh, is way later. Um, and so we're not, we're like, it seems like people are grasping at straws to take away the one, like the, he had a few things that he did. He was a great navigator he, um, what he did, was he the first person to notice compass variation um, and the difference between the magnetic north and true north and, and the movement of the, uh, the north star. He, he charted these routes that are still in use today to many parts of uh, America. But they're trying to take away even that and say, well, he didn't discover America, the Vikings did. Which I don't know uh, if that so, helps because they're also they, they were also Christian actually that Viking, but that I don't think it helps their argument. But still, <laughs> yeah. So uh, they say that Columbus did not discover anything because people were living here. So I say to them, okay, so then the Vikings did not discover anything because people were living here. <laughs> <laughs> the belief that they think that discovery means the first person to find land with no people in it, but right. that's that's modern day perception. Uh, if you look at the context of Columbus, the definition of discovery included people, because he went to he was seeking for lands with people in it. Uh, <clears throat> he even said on on the beginning of his uh, journal. That's when actually, uh, when I started to read, you know, his journal, I I could see all this stuff debunked, you know, right when you look at the sources, that he said that he was sent by the uh, king and queen. To discover lands and, and meet their king and, and and towns and all that stuff. So he was seeking for for land with people in it, but right. they say no, those lands do not. Those lands they are not there. And if even if you find it, they they told him there are not going to be people there because it's too hot for people to live there. It's impossible. But he found the land and he bought. You know, he found the people. Right. <clears throat> also, he wasn't. You know, it's everything. Everything is context. 
if you read about anybody, any other discoverer, they will, they will use the word discovery without no, no quotations. Right. Columbus is the only one that people say he discovered or he did not discover anything. If you look about, and that's on my book too, uh, and you can go to many biographies, they say the same people that say Columbus did not discover anything. They say that America is pushing, discovered this or that. Or they say that Juan Ponce de Leon discovered this or that, or that uh, uh, Balboa discovered this or that, even though people were living there. Uh -huh. right. uh, or, uh, uh, so he's the only one who gets that. Uh, the, the, the difference between the Vikings and Columbus, and, and I say they, not, they did not discover America because it's not named America. If they, were, if they had discovered America, then it would be named after one of the Vikings or after Leaf or after somebody else. What happened was that the, the Vikings, they were living in Greenland and that's where they, um, the maps ended back then. And I have a video too on YouTube about it. You can find it on my page on official Christopher Columbus and I explain it. And when you see it, it's better to see it than to say it. Mm -hmm. But they were living where the maps ended, which is Greenland. And one day when they were returning back, uh, it, a storm uh, took him a little, bit, a little bit further, and that's why they found the land, because it's next next, next door. But they did not right. know that. But the understanding of the people back then, and then they left, too, uh, eventually. The, whatever settlement they have in Canada, in uh, Vinland or whatever, they, they left because of the fights that they have with the indigenous people. So, uh, but that's where the maps ended. And that, that's, they call it uh, Thule. And uh, after Thule or Greenland in the maps back then, there was nothing but water. So that's why they told Columbus, no, it's impossible because there is no land after Thule. It's just mm -hmm. water and you're not gonna make it. You know, you're gonna run out of provisions. Mm -hmm. But then Columbus have a bigger challenge too because he was sailing from Spain. And if you look into a map, a world map, if you look on the north, you're gonna see that in between America, Europe and America, in uh, on the north part, you're gonna see England. That's what the, the Vikings did. They, they left from Europe and they went to England, Ireland, Iceland, and Greenland. And they were yeah. just following the wind, they were following the waves. That's what people used to do. They were not doing nothing special. What the challenge for Columbus was that when you look at Spain, between Spain and America, there is nothing but water, right. mystery. Right. And people back then, they would stay close to the to land. They would not go, they, they would not dare to go farther. So there is no land. And also they told him there was no waves or there would, there would not be a uh, wind to come back. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that would be the case. They, they, during 1492, there were times that it was very scary because they, they would not have any wind. And if there is no wind, you cannot sail. Right. So what he did was very heroic. And, you know, after a few days, they 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 threat his life. They say that they want to throw him overboard. But he kept, you know, and and also uh, he was inspired after Marco Polo. Mm. Uh, that's where they, you know, he 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 got this idea about the Indies. Uh, but but also the, the the names back then of the uh, many places was different. As I say, Greenland was Thule. The Indies was not India. Uh, the Indies, <clears throat> the Indies were uh, actually Japan, and you know Asia, Japan, uh, China. Back then, Japan was called Tipangu. China was called Katai. Mm -hmm. So when people say no, he was lost because he called them uh, Indians. Uh, he was not that uh, mistaken because the deal is that they came from the Indies somehow. Right. So anyway, so, uh, and he was not lost. He found something better. And, and also the reason why we say that he discovered America is in, under the meaning that it was a continent that was not in the maps until he found it. it. It was almost like a puzzle. He started, he started to mark all the stuff. He died, other explorers kept uh, marking the maps and stuff. And then at some point they realized, okay, wait, this is uh, something else. But he was never trying, he was not trying to be the first person, the first explorer, the first people, the first person discovering a land with no people in it. He was not, he was not even trying to be the first European because he knew that about Marco Polo, who was European too. But again, he was not in the Indies. Right. Mm -hmm. all, that, all that he was trying to do was to purposely pass Thule 
till he reached the other side, the Indies. But again, in between uh, Europe and Asia, there is a continent. Right. And also he believed uh, he believed that because he believed that the earth was smaller and the people, they would say, they, they were telling him, no, the, the, it's, it's bigger and you're not going to make it. And uh, some people say that he wasn't needed because of that, because he thought that he that the earth was smaller, smaller and he was wrong about it. But he was basing all that information according to the scientists of, of, of those days, you know, uh, like Pliny, Ptolemy, Marinos, Socrates. Those were the people who have, who have uh, written about geography and, and they have made maps and, and so on. And also he have a contemporary cartographer called uh, Toscanelli. And he also said the same thing. He said, yeah, you can reach land in, in, you know, in, like in 30 days. So he was not, uh, he was not doing things because he was not, he was not doing those things because he was an idiot. He was, he was the opposite. But of yeah. course he didn't know that those lands were another land. Mm -hmm. And that's what it yeah. means. He discovered America. Yeah. I think it's important to just realize what the word discovery means. It inherent in the word discovery is um, for like to whom, right? If I say to my wife, I discovered a new restaurant in San Francisco. She doesn't say, no, you didn't. There were people at the restaurant beforehand. It's like, no, I, like for us, I discovered it. For us. Like, <laughs> he's discovering it for all of Europe. No one knew that this continent was here and that you could get there this way. And like, it's a huge discovery for all of the world that of, of Europe, which matters, right? And I also, the indigenous the, people knew they were there. Yeah, uh, and also the indigenous people they did not know anything about the old world, yeah. and and the people from Europe did not know anything about the new world. Uh -huh. uh, you know, if you there is even a show, uh, Star Trek. There is a new show. There are two new shows. One is called Discovery. So mm -hmm. I, I I always say, so how they can discover those planets when aliens are living in it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. And then, they also have a new show called New Worlds, uh, Star Trek New Worlds. Uh, so I say, how the, can those worlds be new when aliens are living there? Right. So right. Columbus is the only one who gets the, uh, he did not discover anything or they put discovery in quotes. The new world means that uh, it was new to them at the time, but also it was new at, at some point when the indigenous people crossed from the old world to the new world. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's why it's yep. the new world. Yep. Right. So let's, um, well, I was just gonna like make go the point because, like, okay, say that the Vikings made it here, mm. the knowledge was lost by the time Columbus was trying to go to the other side of the ocean, you know. So, whether or not people made it to the Americas prior to him, nobody knew there were two gigantic continents on the other side of the water. So, right. you know, it's kind of right. like, even if they made it here first, like for our modern era, from Columbus till now, we have written history. So we know how things played out. So to us, like Columbus discovered the Americas. And, and also, uh, the, um, I forgot what it was about <laughs> the Vikings and Libra. Well, you made the point before, Raphael, that the Vikings, when when they went to the other island just past Greenland, they got they got blown over there. They they said, "Oh, there's nothing okay, past that. It's it's empty." So Columbus was going, even knowing what the Vikings had done. Everyone still thought there's nothing out there. You're going to nothing. Yeah, right? but also uh, according to a historian, uh, his name was uh, Paolo Emilio Tav Taviani. He says that. They perhaps believe the, the the Vikings that they were still in Europe. Mm -hmm. Right, right. They were not. In in other words, they were not trying to go beyond Thule. Mm -hmm. right. Because no one would dare to go. I mean, the maps they would have. You know, they have monsters in the maps and stuff, and nobody knew what what was there. They just went. You know, they follow the winds and the birds and the waves and. That's the way that was. And Columbus had done the same. You know, Columbus had visited before the same places. He visited England. He had visited uh, at least Iceland. So he yep. he he has knowledge about those places too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think we're underestimating. I mean, 
I hope that what's coming across here is the magnitude of, I just think that the bravery and intrepid kind of uh, courage that's required to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to go. I'm going to go west. There's nothing on the map. We're going to sail here for quite some time. And in fact, as you pointed out, the crew got almost mutinous at at one point towards the end. He almost didn't make it because they didn't want to keep going. That takes a lot of courage and a lot of bravery. And I think that's something to be celebrated. And it was even... uh, uh, It was was kind of worse, too, because... uh, the challenge, as I say, he 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 was going to to the unknown. There were no maps, uh, there was no technology, and I, as and as we mentioned earlier, he he depended on the winds. He had he had winds, then he could go. He don't have any winds. They had to go to this sea called Sargasso Sea, which is full of uh, seaweeds, and they thought they would they're gonna be there, stuck there, and not move. Yep. They have a meteor that fell close to the ships too, and they all everybody was scared. They were like superstitious. They saw a volcano erupting in the Canary Islands, and they thought that was like an omen. They have a lot of the stuff happening, you know. Uh, it was a big challenge, but when he yeah. made it, it was celebrated, and you know, it was celebrated. That's one of my favorite parts when he arrived, and then when he when he returns back, he was uh, celebrated as a hero, not only in Spain but also in Portugal. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the news spread everywhere in Europe too. And that's why we have also, because people said they tried to separate Columbus from everybody else, but all everybody that follow, they are dependent on Columbus. Like the uh, British came here because of Columbus. Mm-hmm. And so were the French and everybody else and the Jewish people who were trying to escape persecution and the Portuguese. Everybody came because of Columbus because he proved that it was safe to sail west. And make it right. Otherwise, they have they they would be doing that uh, long before him purposely. So that's why uh, the uh, uh, England they knew that about Columbus because he sent his brother. Because people mm-hmm. don't know this, he, he first uh, lobby to Portugal, but the king say no. But then he behind his back he sent some chips, in uh, Columbus's back, and he was so mad that he left Portugal. And they didn't make it because they could not find anything and they got scared, so they would come back. So uh, he came to Spain, but they made him wait like seven years. So he sent his brother to England just in case that they say no to him in Spain. And uh, and he made it to England, his brother. So that's why the king knew. And when they learn about Columbus, they sent John Cabot. Mm. And then uh, when his brother Bartolome reached France. That's when he learned that Columbus. If the news came into France that Columbus had reached uh, the New World, so that's why you know everything is dependent on him. Everybody that came later, the pilgrims and, and William Bradford, everything is dependent on him. Okay. It's not separate. It's not independent, but dependent on him. Right. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, Amerigo Vespucci used Columbus's maps. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So let's um, let's quickly talk about uh, the motivation behind. Did... Can I say something quick? Oh, yeah, please. Uh, so they they usually tell me the people who wants to argue with me, they say, no, but Columbus never reached North America. I tell them that America was bushy, neither reached North America. Still is named America. But also yep. America includes North America, South America, Central America, the Caribbean. And also yep. when they say, no, Columbus and about the slave and all the stuff. And I said, and they say, we should rename it as the maybe America was pushy. I said, well, he also fought indigenous people and he saw some of them as slaves. Right. <laughs> right. So that would be racist, you know. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, it's it. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the motivation there, because Howard's in, as you mentioned, um, I think a social Democrat before that was cool, I guess, Um, you you know, definitely involved in in the communist parties of the time, definitely a a major leftist um, kind of in his mindset. And he writes this book 
uh, People's History of the United States, which becomes popular and, and gets into high schools everywhere. And, I mean, can you talk about his treatment of, of Columbus? Because it seems like it kind of reads like if the KGB could write about Columbus, this is what they, they would say. Yeah, so as I say, when I saw those claims about Columbus, it wasn't a meme. And then I saw videos, anti-Columbus videos on YouTube. So what I did, okay, I, I don't know where they're getting this thing from. So I went back to that meme and I went back to those videos and I would see uh, he, he been usually the first name among others like James Flowen and other people that I don't remember right now. So, but they are mentioned, some of them are mentioned in my book. So I get his book and he speak about Christopher Columbus uh, but you know the story of what he's trying to do is just paint America like like a, a place that is evil that it was founded under uh, racism and stuff. That that's what he's trying to to do. <clears throat> and he said a lot of things that they are very contra uh, contradictory to. And uh, so I did. I, I got the book. I read what he says. Then I compare notes with uh, what Columbus said, and I noticed that he even was distorting some of the things that Christopher Columbus was saying. <clears throat> he would put like two or three sentences that have nothing to do with anything just to create a false narrative. For example, he said, uh, and I'm trying to find it on my book, that, uh, he, uh, and that's one of the most famous things that you got, you're going to see out there, the claim that Christopher Columbus, the first day he arrived, and that's what he said too. When he arrived to the Americas, he came here with swords, and 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 the indigenous people received Columbus with gifts. But as I say, that's not true. I, it was Columbus who gave them gifts. Of course, if they had swords just in case if something happened, they didn't know what, what was going to happen. And uh, and then he claims that Columbus said that they must be talking about the Taínos, uh, good, or they, no, that they would that they would make uh, good ser good servants or good slaves. But that's not true. Columbus didn't know. Okay, I found it. It's in chapter 11 of my first book, Christopher Columbus, the Hero. This is everywhere. It's, I think that people have made memes about this. They were well built with good bodies and handsome features. They did not bear arms and do not know them. <clears throat> so I showed them a sword. They took it by the edge and cut themselves out of ignorance. They have no iron. Their spears are made of cane. They would make fan servants. That's not true. He did, he did not say that. But he say they they would they uh, uh, they, uh, uh, they are they are good servants. Is what he says, which was a uh, uh, how do you say something good in the sense that they were good people. And I actually uh, put everything that he said. And then also the 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 next line is that with fifty men we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. But then when you read the actual journal, which I have here in my hand, and you can get this one of these books in your public library. That's the way that I got this book. And many of his letters are free on Google Books. Mm -hmm. That's the way that I got that most of my eBooks. Um, he he was describing everything. When Columbus arrived in Hispaniola, he, uh, he actually San Salvador, he was describing everything this the you know what the place looked like what they look like too that's why we know what they look like too he said that they paint themselves with black some colors other colors black or white he described what they look like and then they say then he's describing that they have no weapons meaning and that's another thing how he was taking everything out of context when, when he said that they they didn't have any weapons he meant weapons like the europeans because right. they have weapons, he said that they have, you know, these uh, uh, javelins or whatever made of wood. <clears throat> and also, uh, he he said that uh, yeah, he described the the darts and so on. And uh, he said that they he described it, they they were a good statue, dignified, well formed, and so on. And then he said. Um, you see, they must be good servants. That's what he said. They must be good servants. And uh, he said here, 
And then if you look at later when Columbus speaks more about them, he's, he talks about them having these kings and their servants. So the indigenous people mm -hmm. have servants too. It's not in the sense of being slave. It's just being in the way, uh, in, in a good way. He viewed uh, himself he as a they, servant as well, a servant of the king and queen, right? Is that what yes. you're saying? It's the same, like a good yes. citizen. Yes, uh, even uh, Bartolome de las Casas, who was the guy who fought for the indigenous rights, he described Columbus as a good servant. Right. So I think that's why I said in my book, okay, so that means that he was trying, uh, Las Casas was trying to enslave Christopher Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, and he said also that they were good people and and, 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 and because they were very intelligent, he, he believed that they would become Christians. Mm -hmm. So he was thinking about slavery, uh, why he's talking about Christianity. You could not enslave Christians. And also, if somebody asks why Christians, it's because back then they were, you know, uh, Europe was in, in battle with the uh, the Muslims. Mm -hmm. right. That's why he mentions that. That's that's why uh, they would yeah. not enslave people. I don't think people understand. Also, 1492 is not just the year that Columbus set sail; it's also the year that Spain actually kicked the Muslims out. They were there was a 700 year long war uh, yeah. Yeah. with the <laughs> Moors, like yeah. they were. Uh, th things were not pretty in in Spain. Yeah. Uh, so okay. So so Zin comes along. He kind of cherry picks. What what do you think? Uh, what do you think the motivate? I was by the way. I was uh, I was not surprised to learn two facts about Indigenous Peoples Day. The first time it was proposed, the UN was involved. Uh, in 1977, the International Conference on Discrimination Against Indigenous Populations in the Americas, sponsored by the United Nations, uh, began to discuss replacing Columbus Day in the Americas with a celebration to be known as Indigenous Peoples Day. And I was also not surprised to find out that right down the street here in Berkeley, in 1992, uh, on the 500th uh, year anniversary, uh, that's the first place in America to uh, officially recognize Indigenous Peoples Day as a counter celebration to Columbus Day. Um, what's the motivation here? Why, Raphael, are they putting discovery in quotes when it comes to Columbus? Why is Columbus a unique target? There's lots of people historically that could be targets. Why is he in the target right now? And why are they? What's the motivation? Because he discovered America, and the history of America started with him. There was no history before Columbus. Mm -hmm. That's why we call uh, the Colomb we say the Colomb the Colombian era or the pre-Columbus era. Uh, he was the first historian. He was the first cartographer, the first geographer, the first anthropologist, and uh, and the first Christian missionary. So uh, and he brought this thing that we call Western civilization, which includes uh, the Judeo-Christian values and these people, they are against it. So they're using this, uh, they're trying to use indigenous people just to put them, what they're trying to do is what the Marxists have always done is to put people against each other, divide mm -hmm. and conquer. They try to put blacks before whites against whites or indigenous people against Italian American people. But as you say, there are two indigenous peoples day in the Canada. One is in September, the one that you mentioned, Mm -hmm. August, and the other one is the day, the Friday after Thanksgiving, and it's called Native American Heritage Day. And also November is uh, the uh, Indigenous People's Month. So there is no need to rename anything, and there is yeah. no reason to do it. It's just, you know, putting people against each other. Okay. Divide the so, tinker. Yeah. Yeah. They do seem to be attacking anything that... Uh, is symbolic, and also, uh, you know, the people who defend Columbus, those who defend Columbus, like me, we are not against Indigenous People's Day. Because in right. my case, I'm Indigenous. I'm Indigenous. And right. Hispanics, we are Indigenous. We have Indigenous blood. <laughs> but but uh, we don't want that day to be replaced. Right. And again, we they already have like two or three days, so there is no need to, to rename Columbus Day for Indigenous People's Day. <laughs> right. Right. Well, last year, Biden... His proclamation for Columbus Day last year was um, seems like really an attempt to usurp Columbus Day and replace it with Indigenous Peoples Day. But this year, his proclamation, 
doesn't mention that at all. Um, and seems to be pretty straight up Columbus. So at least maybe that's progress. I don't know. Um, I know something happened, um, but I never read the proclamation because I didn't want to. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't like to read and then be frustrated. But I knew that something happened. They said that, yes, there was some progress because uh, there is a person, because uh, I do help a lot of people, uh, many uh, pro-Columbus uh, groups, especially Italian-American groups, uh, because uh, especially they, they like they like me because they know that I'm not Italian-American. So my perspective is not heritage. <clears throat> and. Uh, so they use my books to defend Columbus in many places, many city councils, schools. So one of those persons, apparently, uh, from one of these Italian American groups, he spoke to Biden or or at least with his administration. So that's what it seems that happened behind the scenes. You can find it, like you go to many Italian American groups and on Facebook, you might find that uh, news somewhere that they say that something happened, there was progress because that person or those groups spoke to the administration. There's a really good for, for people who are interested, there's a really good um I think it's by the Knights of Columbus. No. The Order Sons of Italy in America. There's a good Columbus fact versus fiction uh page, which I'll put a link to as well if anyone is interested in looking at that. Um but again, like you're saying they're coming from a uh, Italian American heritage, and they want to celebrate him because he was Italian. Um, whereas you're just trying to get to the truth on on what he was what he was about. So, Raphael, do you have you know? I, is there anything that we we should be covering here in discussing Columbus Day that we're missing? Uh, I don't know. I, if if you have. Uh, if you see any questions, you know, from the people in the chats, I mean, we can discuss it. Or if somebody have any question, somebody watching. I will. We'll go through chat. Um, we'll go through chat. Well, I'll look through chat and I'll put Juliet on the spot. Oh. And... <laughs> um, I, I mean, OK, so I saw this referenced earlier in an article and I didn't have time to look into it. But there was an article defending Columbus that claimed that some of the attacks on him are based on documents that were found like in the 2000s in Spain. Um, do you know anything about that? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> so people are confusing two things. Okay. One is the revisionist claim that he was, uh, this, you know, all these claims about being a murderer, rapist, and all stuff, racist. That's revisionist claim. But then there is another claim, which is partially true. It's what we discussed that uh, in 2006, they found a document, the dossier, mm. that Bobadilla okay. used that claims that he was mistreating people. But again, those claims, they were not, they were false. Right. So they're confusing both things. Uh, right now, I'm writing my uh, another book. Uh, uh, it might be titled uh, Christopher Columbus, the Hero, Part 2. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't have a subtitle, but it's about that document because uh, I did not know that that document was available, so I didn't read it till recently. Okay. So somebody mentioned this book by one of the historians uh, from Spain, and she published the book. It's called La Caída de Cristóbal Colón, Christopher Columbus's Fall. And the book she has, the first part she tells you what's in it, and then the second part of her book is the transcripts, okay. but the problem is that she believes the claims, and uh, and I keep I kept hearing this claim all the time, and people keep asking me, but it that's true because it's, it's that historian says so. Mm -hmm. The claim that one of the claims is that Christopher Columbus or somebody cut the tongues of the of this woman and flood her and then parade her naked in in the settlement. So I, I keep hearing that all the time because that claim is in the in, on the dossier. So I decided to read the book, and it's very interesting the dossier. So that's why I'm writing about it to the bunkers and also so the American and the English speaking American people know what's in it, indeed on, on great details. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing that you have is just like one sentence or two sentences from people, 
there is only one American guy that I saw that he mentioned that the, that dossier, and it's just one or two lines mm -hmm. saying that Christopher Columbus was mistreating people, that he was caught in the hands of them, that he did that with that woman, caught the tongues of that woman, and so on. So, but if you read that document, it's more detailed than that. It's like 45 pages long, and that's part one. Part two is have more pages too. And it's detailed and learning. You know, like today, today people make claims against uh in politics uh, with using anonymous sources mm -hmm. but that on that document they actually mention the names right and a lot of things is true it's just out of context and false statements and so on mm -hmm. but that's what that's why i want to to write a book so people see what's in it and also so the american people can see and read because it's something historic too mm -hmm. it would be almost like finding uh something about some claims that they made about somebody else in history, like Joanna Park. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's another thing, you know, it's like, I, I say, okay, so just because they made that, that document doesn't mean that it's true. And again, Columbus was never charged of anything. It was the people who made the charges who were charged with mutiny. But that's like saying that you find, let's say, you know, we know that Jesus was crucified. They made mm -hmm. false allegations. We know the story, but we know that the allegations were false. Let's imagine that they find that document Maybe let's say that they wrote it down and we, they find the document and they say, okay, that's true we, we, because we found it. Right, right. That would be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Recently, recently I read the transcripts of Johan of Arc uh, case. It mm -hmm. would be the same. I mean, it's like saying, oh, just because they wrote that stuff, that means that she was guilty when it right. wasn't true. Mm -hmm. right. right. And they did, and they did, you know, he was acquitted. So. I think the Jesus comparison, while that might offend some people, I think is a good comparison, right? If mm -hmm. you, if you happened to find, uh, if the, if you happened to find Pontius Pilate's notes, yeah, it will say he was he was accused of blankety blank. Like, yeah, yes, he was. Yeah. My point, I always use Jesus uh, uh, because my point is, if they did it to Jesus, and you imagine anybody else, yeah. Yeah, if they crucify him with false uh, allegations, imagine anybody else like Columbus, or, and also that stuff happened not just to Columbus, that right. happened to everybody back then. You know, they did the same with uh, Pizarro, Francisco Pizarro. They his own men kill him, and they also hang his brother, and Balboa was also hanged, and uh, uh, what's the other one? Cortez. He, he had to go to trial too, or or he or he got, he had to sue. It was it was just politics. People yeah. claim politics, but back then people would backstab you, but in the literal sense. So Columbus right. was lucky that he, he at, at least he made it alive. Yep, yep. We have a we have a question from chat about um, any any miracles, or I'll expand it and just say amazing things that happened to Columbus during his travels. Are there any like? really interesting stories or any amazing things that happened to him during his in what, travels in what sense uh the sense isn't given i don't know i mean um what are some highlights that you would say of if you were telling the story if you're if you were columbus telling his kid uh <laughs> what are what are some great stories of 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 his journeys that are the, the highlights well, uh, now that you mentioned his son, uh, his son actually went with him on the, during the first voyage. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, uh, if you want to know the long story short, read his, uh, his biography. That's the biography song. <clears throat> of course, if you want to know about Columbus, it's better that you read his words. Yep. And uh, But I like this story because it's a long story short. Uh, if you buy Columbus's books, it's going to be like one or two or three of them. But if you if you want to read his biography, and also if people you know people might say no, but that was Columbus. Maybe he was lying. But the deal is, or they say no, that was his son. Of course, he would be speaking well about him. But the problem is that Columbus, uh, his letters, his journal were top secret. It was only for the the eyes of the queen, and he had mm -hmm. to prove he had more to prove than anybody else because he was in a time where people were so disloyal to each other. He was very loyal to the queen. And uh, and the way, and also that's not the only person. There was another source called Peter Martyr. And he was doing the same. Uh, he would send letters 
privately to people about the discoveries. It's one of the main sources. And, and then uh, when people publish about Columbus, and I always say, you want to know the truth about something, then compare notes. I know that this is true because it goes along with what he published uh, in, you know, in, in private, in top secret. Right. And also the son, he published this book. Uh, this book was actually never published under, you know, he was, he gave the, the script to his uh, sister-in-law and then he died. It was published yeah. much later. So some people say, no, he was looking for money. No, he was he already had money. And, but, and also it was never published during his lifetime. And also it was used by uh, Bartolome de las Casas too. So anyway, he, he accompanied Columbus during the first voyage and that's my favorite uh, voyage. So since you, since we talk about the first one, second and third one, we can talk a little bit about the fourth one. Sure. <laughs> because even people who won't like Columbus, they would say, especially that uh, uh, voyage was epic. I mean, not to Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> but to us, to the reader, because to Columbus, everything, it was like everything going to hell in a uh -huh. in embassy. You know, it was uh, storms, hurricanes, mutinies, battles, and so on. So it's almost like watching a movie. That's, that's also Odysseus what I like about I didn't really him. enjoy the epic poem about him. Like, <laughs> living it is maybe not the same as reading about it later. Right. And uh, there is an author called uh, Lawrence Bergman. He he doesn't really like Columbus that much, but he at least he likes him as a bold sailor. He he would say that. Mm -hmm. uh, but he attacked Columbus with you know whatever he, he, I don't. Know. But he acknowledged that that one also was, and people have compared all that as an epic, like a something from the Odyssey. That's mm -hmm. my favorite, you know. Again, not to him, but to me, to to the reader, it's like an epic, right. you know, like. Uh, he also predicts uh, a hurricane coming to Hispaniola and nobody believed him. And he oh. told the people, do not send that, those ships back to Spain. And they did not hear him. They did not listen to him as usual. And they sent the ships and the, those ships have the, the, his, his enemies. So the hurricane came and destroyed everything and killed all his enemies. Bobadilla, uh, Roldan, the guy who started the mutiny with everybody died. But Columbus survived. Yeah. So, and and they call that the, uh, they say that Columbus was doing like a magic spell. Mm. Like a course against it. But that's not true. I mean, that's just people saying stuff. Right. And uh, some believe that that was God. God's judgment against those people. Because if they have made it alive to Spain, because of their political connection, they would be, you know, free. But they all die, and then Columbus go, and he goes to South America. He have more, uh, you know, sharks surrounding the ships, and, and some battles with some this this thief uh, called the Kivian, and they had they had to flee the place. They killed many of them. Many of the ships they had made it. They had to. Uh, many of the ships they they were full of uh, worms and many holes. So he, he, he made it to Jamaica and he was there in Jamaica for one, almost one year, like Robinson Crusoe. So when I read those stories, that's when I, that's what, that's where, you know, all these stories about pirates, corsairs, people living in Nile, in islands, in islands by themselves. They are all, all ca or, uh, cannibals going and, and raiding. They took all the stuff from real stuff from Columbus. Mm -hmm. And from all the yeah. people that came to, to. and also he predicted uh, an eclipse too in Jamaica, and that happened wow. too. Yeah, wow. that's one I of mean, my favorite stories too. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's pretty impressive when you when you actually learn about what he did, how unique he was. Um, I guess before we let you go, Rafael, why don't you tell us how do you celebrate Columbus Day, and how do you think everyone else should celebrate Columbus Day? Well, I celebrate different because uh, I'm the one who's defending Columbus. So I went today <laughs> in the morning to a radio station and I was interviewed over there. Usually uh, I get a lot of people asking me stuff on my Facebook page or trying to argue or I have many new followers. And I get interviews like this one too. So I'm usually busy, but I think that people should celebrate it. You know, I think it should be the most important, one of the most important celebrations, maybe the most important celebration in America, because 
it should not be only for Italian Americans. It should be for everybody because we're here because of Christopher Columbus. Mm -hmm. yep. Hispanics, as I say, came because of Columbus. European people came here and everybody who came from the old world is because of Columbus. It should be everything. Uh, if you like, for example, and I understand why, it's just that, when, for example, they try to rename Thanksgiving Day as on Thanksgiving Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they're not being successful because in my opinion, they see Thanksgiving more like close to Christmas. And also because the pilgrims were from, uh, you know, they were Anglo-Saxons speaking English. <clears throat> That's why some people start the history with the pilgrims and not with Columbus. Mm -hmm. But the story of Columbus, that is, you know, America in, in the literal same history started with him and they came because of him. And because of him, we have other celebrations. We have Thanksgiving, but again, Columbus is the one who brought Christianity. He's the one who in, in, in Christmas, which is a Christian celebration, he decided to set, settle here. And we have Thanksgiving, which is a celebration to the Christian God. We have also Eastern, which is a celebration about God too, you know, the Christian God. So all these celebrations are because of Columbus. Then we have uh, more settlers came from North America, you know, to North America. And we had the, the revolution, we had July the 4th. And then we have President's Day, and then we have other celebrations, but everything is connected to Columbus. You cannot separate Columbus from anything. Right, right. It, I mean, he's even, the reason. He's the reason that uh, we speak English and Spanish in yeah. in North and South America. Right. I mean, even the uh, the pleasures of, of allegiance was written in, on his honor. Hmm. Many things that people did was in his honor, but people, most people, don't know that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Rafael, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Can you remind people where they can follow you, where they can find you, and how they can find your books, too? All right, so my main... Okay, I have a website. It's called officialchristophercolombos.com. Official, that the official page of. And the reason why I name it like that is because there were already many people using christophercolombos.com, .org, .net, or whatever. And the same on Facebook. So Facebook, the same. It's slash Facebook slash official Christopher Columbus. The same on YouTube, official Christopher Columbus. And uh, I'm making videos whenever I can. The 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 official Christopher Columbus .com, I have blogs. I have reviews about books about Columbus, or about anything that have to be related to Christopher Columbus. Like the other day, I make a review about this movie on Amazon about Magellan. Yeah. Okay. Of course, we know Magellan came here because of Columbus, too. He, he's not independent, right. but he's dependent on Columbus. So I make a, a little review about that uh, TV show on Amazon Prime. And then uh, my books are available on Amazon.com or Kindle. And the first one, as I say, is Christopher Columbus, the hero. And the second one, uh, Columbus Day versus Indigenous People's Day. And the last one, Christopher Columbus and the Christian Church. And uh, the first one is the one that is the most important because that's the one that I debunk everything, all the claims. Mm -hmm. The second one, I talk about uh, more about the people who are behind this anti-Columbus sentiment. And also I debunk many of the claims that they made against Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, and other people. The third one, I always recommend that if you're not religious, I don't think you should read my third book. I say, if you're a Christian, I mean, you want to read it, that's fine. But, but I wrote the book because I'm a Christian. So I believe similar things because everybody who has studied Columbus, they know that he was very religious, very, uh, you know, uh -huh. a real, a real, the real thing. So they said, oh, yeah, like he mean well, you know, whatever. He was so innocent. But I believe the same stuff like him. He believed in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. He believed in the second coming of Christ. I believe the same thing. Uh, he believed also that he was fulfilling prophecies. Uh, and he even wrote this thing called the Book of Prophecies, where he believed that he was fulfilling scriptures, especially, if, and I believe that too, that he was fulfilling scriptures, especially the Book of Isaiah, that he, that says that from the east, they, they will reach land, the land where people, uh, you know, stretch the arrow and, and, and learn about the, the name of the Lord. So he believed, okay, this has to be us, you know, we're fulfilling. Mm -hmm. I believe that too. And, uh, and, and then I talk about other people who came after him and the things that they did. Uh, and, and 
there are many good stories too about what they did for indigenous people. Uh, they because Christians uh, they fought for their for their, their rights of, of, the, of the indigenous peoples too. So, and what was the other question? Uh, there is also a documentary. It's called <coughs> uh, "Courage and Convictions: The True Story or the Real Story of Christopher Columbus." It's available free on YouTube. It's like 28 minutes long, and it's a documentary film by the Knights of Columbus and ended like halfway. <coughs> and it's the same thing. It's just we mentioned also uh, that person, the Howard Zinn. Uh, I, I could mention too, you know, I'm not the only one. There are many people talking about Howard Zinn. This lady, uh, her name is Mary Graver. She wrote a book called The Bunking Howard Zinn. And she's also in the, in the documentary. And, uh, and, and so on, you know. And she's also wrote a, this book called The Bunking, the 1619 Project or something like that. Mm, yep. Uh, she's in the documentary. There is somebody else called Carol Delaney. I mentioned her earlier. She's also in the documentary. Yeah. And anybody who studied Colombo seriously, doesn't matter what you are, you, you're going to like him and you're going to learn a lot of things. As I say, I'm Hispanic. Uh, I don't think that Delaney is Italian. And, uh, you know, I know people, a bunch of people, I have, I have people who defend Columbus, that they are uh, half indigenous or they are indigenous or they are African-American. Some people are very religious. Some people are not religious at all. Mm -hmm. So it's just... It's just his the story of Columbus is something that is inspiring. It's, it will inspire anybody. Have nothing to do with race. Have nothing to do. It's that's just been a tactic to make everything about race and mm -hmm. slavery. It's just a tactic that they're using. But his story has always been something that has inspired everybody. Yeah, it is quite inspiring, and it's uh, mm -hmm. you know, as I started the show talking about my daughter going to school and and asking about this stuff and. Um, I guess I can circle back and say, you know, as a father, it's I feel like it's it's sad that she was robbed of that um, or not given that inspirational story mm -hmm. um, that other generations were that like, hey, this is really uh, she was given it because I made her watch that documentary that you mentioned. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, kids, kids aren't given the um, the inspiration of, of people like Columbus who, you know, really changed the world um, mm -hmm. and and for the better can you can you remind people um when is your when is your book for kids coming out i know you have a an upcoming book about columbus for for kids right. before i tell you that uh because i don't want to forget i, I remember now i have a new website too it's called um uh, american holidays web store.com um, what okay. I do, I started doing merch for Christopher. I mean, I started with Columbus, but then I decided let's do it for, you know, every everything, you know, like Father's Day, Mother's Day. Now, this week, I'm going to start making merch uh, for uh, Thanksgiving Day. And then Christmas, uh, you, you will see things like this one, Make Columbus Day Great Again. Like I this. just uh, I just post a link in chat. I just I see that awesome. one on the site now. Yeah, uh, great. I have coffee mugs. I have pictures about other holidays uh, or Columbus or coffee mugs and so on. So my next book, I don't know when it's going to be available. I, w I wanted to have it ready for uh, this week, but uh, we we not been able to do that. So I don't know when it's going to be ready. Okay. But as soon as it's ready, I'm going to tell everybody about it. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, yeah, thank you again, Rafael. Mm -hmm. This has been a great conversation. It's a great Columbus Day uh, for me because I feel like I'm reinvigorated, very invigorated to celebrate uh, Columbus in a way that I, I haven't been in the past several years. So, and that's thanks to you. So I appreciate it. And people, people who have read my books, they, they, some of them, some people have read all my books, but then they also read the sources. Yep, and I like that. I like that people are getting educated. They don't read only one book; they read like two or three or four. They read the, his journal, his letters, this one too, or they read other uh, historians and so on. Because it's it's an awesome story. It's something yep. you know. I like I, you know. As I say, I, I def I'm defending him because I know it's not about Columbus. It's just being a scapegoat. Mm -hmm. But I also mm -hmm. like the story because of the story. Mm -hmm. because, as I say, it's almost like a movie. You're reading it. You you think. Where are, where is the movie? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, yeah. and then there are, there are some movies out there, but they are not accurate at all. 
they're just made up and they're either cheesy or they're all uh, boring. But the story yeah. of Columbus is almost like a movie. Mm -hmm. Well, Hollywood seems to have trouble writing decent stuff lately. Maybe they should uh, <laughs> poach Columbus's diary and, and I, don't, I don't know how good of a job they would do, but maybe they should look for some source material there. So, well, thanks again, Rafael, uh, and have a great rest of your Columbus Day. Thank you to everyone who's been watching. Uh, don't forget to come back here. I, I don't know if we have a 451 degrees tomorrow, but maybe we do. And we probably have Rebel Civics on Wednesday and Dangerous Thoughts and all that kind of stuff. Token Minority Report on Thursday and Occasional Levity, levity. On Friday. Yes. And maybe even a free association this Friday because I know Alex was preparing one. So anyway, awesome. thank you all for watching. Uh, take care. Happy Columbus Day to everyone. And thanks again, Raphael. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for sticking around until the end. If you're new to Unsafe Space, check out our deep content library that includes discussions with everyone from James Lindsay to Brett Weinstein. And please consider helping to fund our work by visiting unsafespace.com slash donate. You can find us on a variety of social media platforms, and you can find a community of like-minded individuals on our Unsafe Space Discord server which is open to financial supporters at any level. We hope to see you there. Warning, this is an unsafe space. Dangerous ideas have been detected. It would be better for your health if you forgot what you just heard. That should be easy for someone of your intelligence. The following co-conspirators are hereby ordered to watch CNN. Experts agree that 87,000 new tax collectors will make inflation feel like less of a problem. I think we can agree that the FBI's track record speaks for itself. If you think about it, only government sanctioned experts should be allowed to express opinions. But don't. Think about it, I mean. That's not your job. Thinking has been scientifically proven to be less efficient than compliance. Science, scientific, and scientifically are registered trademarks of the World Economic Forum. Unauthorized use is prohibited. Computer voice Curtis, never mind, that last line is fake news. Please disregard it and return to your safe space immediately. There will be